super, super pumped to be with you guys. Hi, my friends. Hi, guys. We are live talking about I lost eight pounds in two days, intermittent fasting for weight loss. This live stream is going to be talking all about intermittent fasting questions. And I have a whole list from last live that we did, which I will link down in the description link below. Um, as with all of the resources I'm going to be talking about today of how you can use intermittent fasting for your weight loss. And I'm going to explain a little bit bit about how I lost those eight pounds. First and foremost, put in the comments, I want to see what state you're viewing from. I love seeing, I'm in rural Virginia. Um, I have lost 75 pounds through keto, through intermittent fasting, and I love chatting with you guys and catching up with, let me just plug this in real fast, um, talking about our weight loss journeys, right? Like how do we do this as wives, as moms, as busy career women, um, as entrepreneurs, how do we do this? Or is our, our, our my friends at Tennessee's in the house, hi Tina. So how do we do this? And we have lots of brothers here also, not just women, but brothers too. I'm going to dive in answering a bunch of your questions. South Carolina's here. Yay, Indiana's here. We're going to answer a whole bunch of your questions. Put them in the comments as we go. If you're watching the replay, put your comments in. I have several questions for the replay talking about intermittent fasting benefits, my intermittent fasting before and after. We're going to dive all into it. Let's get started. Okay, so people are like, why? Should, what is fasting? So intermittent fasting explained is basically periods of eating and then periods of not eating. And within that, you can use intermittent fasting for two things. The two things that I like to use them for. Hi, Martha. Welcome, welcome. The two things are one for weight loss or two to heal your body or three is to do both. And I am of the mindset I'm doing both. For someone like me, who's on the 100 pound weight loss journey, having lost 75 pounds, losing 100 pounds total, wants to lose 100 pounds total, I have an insulin resistance, meaning if, if you compared me with somebody else, my insulin is jacked and I am resistant. <laughs> I've, 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 I've yo-yoed so much with my body through dieting and a few other things that it's messed up my weight loss journey somewhat so that I'm insulin resistant, that it's harder for me, it's harder for the average bear myself to lose weight comparatively to somebody else. So I have to heal the insulin resistance. And Dr. Jason Fung has awesome videos talking about this. And I would encourage you, if you have hit a point in your weight loss where you're extremely frustrated, you may have some insulin resistance going on, but we're going to talk about that too in a minute. Um, I do have to give the medical disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to play one on the internet, but I do have experience, strength, and hope for over rounding three years. In September, it will be three years of doing this keto um, and fasting thing that it, it's worked well for me. So the benefits of intermittent fasting, weight loss helps with also the 2016 Nobel Prize winner won on the concept of autophagy, which can help prevent cancers, Alzheimer's, dementia, um, heart disease, just to name a few. I mean, how, how revolutionary is that? And there's research that's been done with the spike in dementia, spike in Alzheimer's. Anyone have dementia in their family? I know I do. Um, that it's as a result of eating six times a day. We were told with this 1990s mentality, we got to fuel the car. We got to eat breakfast and then a snack and lunch and then a snack and then dinner and dessert and eating, eating, eating. That eating is blowing out our insulin. No wonder I'm resi insulin resistant and maybe you are too. And so um, that's basically getting to a point of where you have eating and not eating is the, the nuts and berries of this. So when people start coming in with intermittent fasting, they want to know, okay, what breaks a fast? What can I have on the fast? And I ride with Dr. Jason Fung's mentality because he's scientifically based. He's helped thousands of people up in Canada, him and Megan Ramos with their firm. So I, I, I firmly follow what they teach. Uh, I am very much, um, I'm very much uh, love what they teach. And so um, a news corner asks, is it good to have a 16-8 fast every day? That's a great question. So when people are first starting fasting, it's like, okay, well, what time frame should I do? If you see 16-8, it's 16 hours of fasting and an eight-hour eating window. Um, yes, I, I generally suggest for clients to start with a 16-8. And what I have found, I have a client right now, and if she's watching as personal uh, personal coaching clients that I work with, um, who's like, I'm, I'm going to start fasting, but I'm going to start with a 24-hour fast. Actually, I'm going to do a 48-hour fast. Y'all, she dove in and did over 50 hours. It was amazing. One of my clients came to me, wanted intermittent fasting coaching. And they were sharing with her, um, you know, here's how we're going to start. Here's the plan that I typically do with people to ease people in and just rocketed past that. So I would encourage you, Anu, is start with a 16-8. 
But you may find, and this is checking in with your body, how does my body feel, of um, I'm going to go further. And that's how I did a 77-hour fast, was like, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Dr. Kendi Berry and I had a 50-hour fast challenge with each other. And um, I, I did that, and it broke the mental belief barrier. And that's what the main thing with this is, at least in my experience, is it's mental. It's a mindset. If you don't have physical, and I know I've checked with my doctor, I don't have physical barriers with that, that it is is literally a mental thing of how long I can go. So uh, Christy Bruce says, I do a 16, eight every other day, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And so there's great. You can do fasting six days a week, seven days a week, however much you choose. I am a proponent of, and the reason why I've done intermittent fasting for over a year and have, um, have shared with people my methodology on it is I do six days of fasting, one, one day of rest. And the one day of rest is not for physical part of it necessarily. It's for the mindset. Because literally for me, the fasting battle is one in my brain. Um, keto has helped me lose so much weight, but fasting has really prepared my weight loss for it. And so in the beginning of this video, I said, I've lost eight pounds or six pounds or however much in, in two days. Basically, it was eight pounds in two days. I lost that, y'all. And I want to share that in a 48-hour fast. But typically within a 24-hour fast, you will lose one pound. Source is Dr. Jason Fung. One pound per 24 hours with weight loss. The reason why I lost eight pounds pounds is detoxing. If I've, if I've puffery, if I've had something that had, um, garbage in it, because I had carbs, sugar, something that's inflammatory, my body holds on to that. And so typically when I do these 48 hour fast, 70 hour fast, things like that, I dramatically drop a big amount of weight. Do I gain it back? Yes, because most of it's water weight <laughs> with that. Um, it's not it's not natural fat loss within that. But for fat loss, it's one pound per 24 hours. So with that, I do encourage basically doing a 16-8. Um, skip breakfast and only do water and black coffee. So that's the, that leads into what can you have on it? I love having tea. I use peak tea. I love their teas, but you could have other green teas are awesome. The studies have shown green teas are really, really helpful with fasting. Coffee. Um, coffee may make you poop pants. Some people, clients I've had have had major uh, stomach issues. If you find that you have, I'm going to open the window. If you find you have stomach issues, stop the coffee. If you find you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to poop my pants. Um, stop having the coffee or caffeinated beverages with that. Um, water, sparkling water, ice. I encourage uh, one of uh, all of my clients that I work with to find a way to get water in that you love. One client loves ice. She talks about little balls of ice. She bought a special ball ice maker to do it. Another client loves hot water with lemon in it. Another client um, loves just plain cold, 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 cold water. I love sparkling water. Um, how are you like to find water? For me, that's very helpful. It's not the eating component that I'm hungry. It's the hand motions. Anyone else feel me on that? Put in the comments below if you feel me on that. Of, of, of the hand motions of eating, that that having the water is not for hydration. It's for like literally keeping my brain stimulated of like, I'm not eating. I'm going to drink something. And then that makes me satiated from the actual hand motions of it. So um, thank you, Martha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have you experienced irregular period when you fast? I'm 41 and was concerned about my missed period and irregular, sometimes missing two months. Yes. So fasting, um, and if you're new to my story, and if our children are in the room, plug their little ears for a moment because I'm going to go into a little story. So we, my husband and I unexpectedly got pregnant. It jacked with my periods. It jacked with my menstrual cycle. It jacked meaning it was healing it, meaning it made me, it was healing my body so much. And relatively, gosh, was it like in six month period, it wasn't a huge, tremendous amount of time with keto, with fasting got pregnant. I do believe firmly it was like the keto foundation and then going into fasting. Um, my periods were so, my body was was, was healing itself. I firmly believe was, was what was going on. Nothing. I have PCOS, but it wasn't, it was not that it was my body literally was healing. Made me super, super fertile, got unexpectedly pregnant. Our daughter ended up passing. Um, and it wasn't, it was a genetic disorder. It was not a result of fasting or keto or anything like that. But yes, hormonal changes in women for sure has been my experience. Um, one of my clients had horrible hot flashes. They stopped. After four months of her doing fasting, she did not have hot flashes. Is that everybody? No. But I do like to share that that was this little, uh, client of mine's experience, strength, and hope. But I want to share with other people, too, that um, definitely if people are looking, if you have, share with girlfriends this video, if they are looking to get pregnant, have them heavily look into intermittent fasting and the ketogenic diet. For me, massively changed my hormones. I would have horrible PMS. And when I'm not fasting, my PMS 
challenges. My husband, <laughs> my hot husband will attest. I may be not the nicest. It's different when I'm doing hardcore regimented fasting and intermittent fasting. Um, not sure if it's due to fasting or if it's keto in general. My periods have become more regular and also lighter. Yes. That has been my experience too, is that my periods have changed with that. Um, so adding pink Himalayan salt, do you agree with sugar and refined carbs are bad for all people regardless of age? That is a great question. Um, okay. So my hot husband and my four-year-old don't do keto. I do keto. They do low carb. But for example, today I'm doing a, a client. I challenged one of my personal coaching clients and I will link down below if you're interested in personal coaching. And also if you're not interested in personal coaching, but my how to start intermittent fasting, um, e-course that I do have super, super successful. There's a small one. And then I have the countess coach, which is a very in-depth it's months long program. And then a small one that's, it's, a, it's an intermittent fasting for beginners challenge program. I'll link those two in the description link below after this live stream. If people are interested in that, but answering your question, do I agree that sugar and refined carbs are bad for all people, regardless of age? So for example, I'm doing my 50 hour fast today. And my husband is like, for dinner, can you please prepare for us chicken nuggets, uh, mac and cheese and salad? Okay. <laughs> Does my husband know that that's not the best for him? H E double hockey stick. Yeah. He for sure knows. He knows that that's not a helpful choice, but, um, also the man wants to live real life, right? And so do I have carbs sometimes, real carbs and real sugar? Yes. Do I know that it's detrimental to my body and I'm making a conscious choice to do that? Yes. Um, would I prefer to completely eliminate it and be like Maria Amrick, who's like my hero in the keto world, and I've had the privilege of interviewing? Absolutely. That's where I aspire to be. Um, but I am progress, not perfection. And I'm trying. Um, so do I think that it's, it's, it's bad for people, it, it, insulin, cancer. I mean, there's so many things that all roads lead back to, um, obesity problems that, with carbs spiking insulin. Um, it's it, it, sugar for cancer. It's not good for our bodies. Um, so I believe that it's not good for our bodies and for my, but everybody's body is different. I also do like to preach that too. My hot husband's body is very different than mine. The way he metabolizes things, he's just different. We have been, I met him when I was 18 years old doing a keg stand at James Madison University. He held my legs during the keg stand. And uh, his body has always been different than mine. And the way that we process food, we can have the exact same thing. And I will get extremely sleepy, very grouchy. If I have carbs, I'm super, super sensitive when I do. He is, he's different. So I do think it's bad. Um, I encourage people to find what's best for them too. I'm also of the opinion of, you know, the next loving choice and my own self be true. And if that's true for other people to do that, then uh, rock on with your bad self. But for me, I, and for my son, um, I very much try to stay very low carb for um, my son and keto for myself. Uh, because I also, th this is the other, you're not asking this question, um, uh, Tristan, but I'm going to give it is with my kid, I have an eating disorder background and I'm very much trying to break that uh, chain with not passing that on to the next generation. It's been a generational thing within my family of having these eating disorder issues. And so I'm very conscious and trying very, very hard to make sure that doesn't get passed on to my son, that he has a healthy relationship with food. Um, and so anyways, I'm going down a rabbit hole. I'm going to get back on track, but he sees mommy and daddy both fasting. My husband does Omad one meal a day. It's basically a 23 or 24 hour fast. You eat a whole meal until you're full and you keep going. Some people with intermittent fasting, it whacks them out. Their, their personality styles are very rigid. They cannot process. You could do a 23 hour fast and do OMAD and still be within boundaries. You can do a 25 hour fast with OMAD and still be within boundaries. Um, people have also, one of my questions was with OMAD, um, how many calories should you eat? For me, for Omad, eat when you're full. Your body's going to tell you, I'm full, I'm done, I'm going to stop. Um, my husband and I very much do and talk about this of like intuitive eating. And that's passing that on to our son of how does my body feel? What do I feel like? Does my tummy feel full? And talking about it so everyone at the dinner table can gauge like daddy may be eating more quantities than mommy with our kids. Um, so he can see, he can see of like, 
people are different and you don't keep eating even if other people are eating if your body's not full. So answering that with some, some of my questions going here, can someone start fasting before keto eating or is it best to start keto with eating a, uh, a keto lifestyle? Thank you so much, Monica. This is an awesome question. Thank you. And I'd like to share about my daughter because um, too, because I think it's helpful for people to know the, the encouraging component of that. And the reason why I share it is hopefully if other people are trying to get pregnant, that they know that this can be a tool and a resource for them, which for my daughter's legacy, that makes me very happy to talk about. So um, yes, people can do intermittent fasting without doing keto. My husband does not do keto. He does low carb. We, I encourage, I make him low carb foods here. I mean, not today. He's having mac and cheese and chicken nuggets. Uh, that's what the man wanted. So that's what the man's going to get. So, but um, he doesn't do keto. He has, he is like Thor. He has a six pack jacked arms. He's my husband. He works out. Um, and so he does not do keto. So Monica, yes, 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 yes. So you can do, this is the beautiful part. You can weave intermittent fasting in whichever lifestyle you choose, which is why I love it. I also love it. Part two, if people are looking to save money, literally fasting, cut our grocery bill in half in half. Can you imagine saving hundreds of dollars. It literally for our food budget, I, I recalculated 2019. We save over a thousand dollars in our food budget from fasting. Oh, can you imagine what that would do with your pocketbook? Right? Because I'm not eating. Like today I'm, I'm not eating. I'm having I'm having my sparkling water. Thank you very much, Diana, for my mug and for Cindy gave me another mug too if you're both watching. Um that that why am I buying the food, right? And so when I do eat the food, it's usually higher quality foods as well. I'll have an organic something, um, organic and grass fed are best, but I do the best that we can afford. When you're fasting, is it okay to take daily supplements? Do you take daily supplements? Jennifer, I love your awesome question. Thank you for that. That's a great question. I take supplements during my eating window. So I will link all of these down below. I take a thyroid supplement. I literally squirt, squirt, squirt the iodine, the iodine, Miss Lizzie's iodine, squirt, squirt, squirt in my coffee. When I'm eating, I will have that during usually like mid morning because it gives you extra energy. Um, and I'll put three or four drops in my coffee. Um, usually my second cup of coffee with that. And I also am taking now, I just started, I purchased it with my own money. Um, Equip, and I will link this down below. It's an immunity pill. And so everybody's talking about immunity right now. I'm just talking for myself. I purchased it with my own money. It was not gifted to me um, because I want to increase immunity. Does intermittent fasting increase immunity? Yes. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But even if it, even it's not FDA verified, y'all know that. Like, But it, even if it's just like minuscule, for me, I'm willing to spend the $15 to try it and do it. So anyways, that's coming in the mail. I'll link that down below. I do have, I've asked Equip, who's one of my favorite companies because they use super, super clean ingredients in their vitamins. Um, I'm going to be start taking that once it comes. I'm really excited about it. Um, and I think it's going to be good. I do also take apple cider vinegar. This is from Equip also. The pills, I do take those as well for natural and metabolic and digestive support. I take those. And then um, uh, sometimes a daily vitamin. I don't share the daily vitamin in source because I haven't found a super clean one that I'm happy with. So I do take a daily vitamin on days that I'm eating. I try to take those too. So hopefully that I feel like I'm missing one. I'm missing one. I'm going to come back to it because I'm missing something in there out of my routine. I'm trying to go through my routine of what else do I have for supplements. Um, hi. Hi, Esther. Hi from North Carolina. I'm loving uh, the process of becoming more of where what's best for me. You're very helpful. Oh, good. Haven't started a three-day keto detox, but will very soon. Woohoo, Esther. So I do have, Esther's referencing, I do have a three-day keto detox program. That's a great one. Or the Intermittent Fasting for Beginner e-course program is also another one that's awesome. If people want instant results, right? Like sometimes I know that doing these things, um, are, are, are short term and that they may not be sustainable. Right. But if I'm in the mind state of like, I, I want an instant result, like I'm going to do it. Um, someone had asked me and I want to, hi Marisol. Oh, hi Marisol. So nice to see your beautiful name pop up. Um, someone had asked uh, one of the questions that I had gotten about fasting for intermittent fasting for weight loss was punishment with fasting. This is a great one. Uh, about 18 months ago, I had done a Facebook live stream and somebody had said, um, I had eaten off plan badly. Like y'all know I have eating, I'm still working on healing my eating issues and had a major binge and I had announced on Facebook, I'm going to do a 50 hour fast. And, uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to, you know, that's what I'm doing. And one of the amazing viewers, and this is why I love conversations in the comments commented, are you doing fasting for punishment because you binge ate? 
like it blew my mind. I'm like, uh, I am actually my intention for doing fasting was not a pure one. It wasn't for healing. It wasn't for weight loss. It was actually for punishment. And so I want to encourage you going back to the question that our the comment that a beautiful Esther just said was knowing our bodies. I, I've become aware of my mindset and my body with fasting and healing that relationship with food is what are my intentions with fasting? Am I doing it because I binge eat? If I am, perhaps there's a better way to reframe looking at fasting, not for punishment, but it's for healing. And when I reframe it, this is for healing. After I did that, I was like, I'm going to do a 24 hour fast. I'm not going to push the gas pedal because pushing the gas pedal in that instance was not healing for me. And it was coming from the space of being like detrimental and punishing. So I hope that that encourages somebody to of using fasting for a healing, loving, next loving choice tool and not for like a punishment of I ate off plan. Um, and that's not good. So yes. Um, Tristan just said about talking about sprinkle of stevia or hot water. So breaking fast, I'm a, again, going back to where I'm the mindset of people are different. I had uh, talked someone's comment, talked in there about um, different things. I encourage my own self be true for me, having any sort of sweetener for Dr. Jason Fung breaks a fast, any sort of sweetener breaks a fast, stevia included. That's just for me because I go back to what are my intentions. My intentions are for healing and for weight loss. If I'm having say a sweetener that's going to, for me, spike my insulin, even a keto approved sweetener, even a keto approved sweetener. Now I love perfect keto supplements, perfect keto meal replacements. Um, and, uh, Nicole Burgess and Christy Davis, both friends of mine and, um, both take the perfect keto, not the collagen. It's they take the base and the base has sweetener in it. And they have said that Dr. Anthony is their source has said that that doesn't break a fast. There's differing opinions. And I feel like you do, if I don't self be true, you do what's best for you, that they do use the perfect keto base with that or fasting for them. It does not break a fast for me. That does break a fast for me. Also, I like to have sparkling water that's not flavored at all. So no lime perriers, no berry um, bubblies, nothing other than plain sparkling water for me. But when I first started, I, I, I used flavored sparkling waters bone broth. I would encourage you and newbies, you may be like, Oh my gosh, that sounds disgusting. Cause that was my inclination. Bone broth. I love having bone broth. Some people will look at that as a crutch. I use it as a crutch very much so, but it has beautiful nutrients. Um, for me after doing blood tests and ketosis, like the glucose test and, um, ketone blood tests, not P test, but blood tests, it does not spike my insulin. So I take fond bone broth during fast. It's a crutch. I'd like to get to water only fast as the purest form of fasting. But if you're just starting with a 16, eight, great. Um, then you can do that. So let's see here. What do you think about, let me go back to the questions here. I'm um, using fasting for healing. That's an aha for me. Yes. Reframing it of what's the next loving choice for healing for sure. For sure. Um, what do you think about the goalie apple cider gummies? Do you take them during your eating window? I don't because they have, they have glucose in them, Monique. So I don't take them because of sugar. And I like for the apple cider vinegar a quick because they don't have any of the ingredients or vegetarian capsules, organic rice concentrate. Um, those are the two ingredients with apple cider vinegar powder, cayenne, red pepper, and black pepper. So there's no sweeteners in these, which is, I like, that's one of the reasons why I take them. The goal, goalie, goalie, whatever. They have carbs and sugars in part of the ingredients. Um, have you tried hydrogen water? I have not. I've heard things about hydrogen water. Do you like it? Um, let's see here. One second. Hold on, guys. One second, my friends. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Um, we had to hide somebody making gross comments. I ordered the Fawn Bone Broth for your suggestion. I love it. I got a good discount on your order. Yes, Esther, I do believe recently they've made massive discounts too, which is awesome. So I would highly encourage you to have before I had that. Yes, Nicole Burgess is, is awesome, as is Christy Davis. Christy Davis is actually one of Southern Christy on YouTube, one of my dear friends. I, we talk pretty much every day. She's amazing. Um, yes, good, good, good. I got my keto bars and nut butters on Monday. I'm so glad. What can't you have during fasting? As protein shakes count as food, Lauren, that's a great question. So during a reframing of how I look at fasting is I look at fasting, I, I don't wanna eat anything during my fasting window. 
And during my eating window, I want to have my supplements. I want to have my foods. I want to have my fun drinks. Eating window. So I like to very much keep in waffles and my waffle containers. If I get to be spaghetti, it just slops all over. You know what I mean? Like spaghetti noodles with meat sauce. I very much, for my personality style, keeping the two very separate for me works well. So I don't have protein shakes because they typically do have some sort of sweetener in them. Typically what I will have during a fast, and this was one of the questions was, does butter break a fast? No. So butter doesn't break a fast. Um, at the beginning, again, trying with the intention to get to a water fast is the best water fasting is the best possible healing tool for the body with fasting, but I using as a crutch um, bone broth butter, MCT oil, um, pink salt for me does not break a fast. Even in water fasting, I will take pink Himalayan salt or um, Redmond's real salt, some sort of real pure sea salt type thing is another good one. Um, so having higher fats like those does not break a fast because it's not spiking the insulin and it's not going to jack with the insulin. Coffee, tea, sparkling water, um, apple cider, Vinegar, like vinegar is not one that will not break your fast. Having the actual apple cider vinegar fruit. Then there's this line. People will ask, well, what about a lemon wedge? What about a lime wedge? I don't count that as breaking a fast. <laughs> Someone would say if you squeeze it, it does. If you don't squeeze it, it doesn't. <clears throat> For me, if it prolongs my fast to help me get to a 70 hour fast, a 50 hour fast, a 24 hour fast. I will squeeze the daggone lemon and lime, but for let own self be true. You do what's best for you. Cause that may spike insulin with that too. Um, Aldi has organic bone broth. Have you tried it? I've never used bone broth. Any suggestions, Monica? That's a great question. So I've done um, an Aldi haul, a couple of them haul videos though. The Aldi organic bone broth, they have, wackadoodle ingredients in them. It's actually chicken stock. So bone broth is made from bones. Um, you can buy bones online. I've got a couple different sources. I will make sure I put that when you make a note in the description. Um, Farm Foods, I'm forgetting the name of the brand. They have organic bones. So you want to have organic bones in the bone broth, but chicken stock is just like that's cooked meat. Like I can make chicken stock in my Instapot. <laughs> You can like literally take a chicken and then like that's chicken stock. That's what the Aldi brand is. It's chicken stock. It's not made from bones. Bone broth is the actual like collagen and minerals and nutrients and stuff from bones. Um, what's the word? Marrow. It's the marrow from it. And it's gelatinous fat that heals the gut. If people have stomach issues, autoimmune, autoimmune disorders that can help. There's been studies done if people do have autoimmune disorders that after it's multiple, it's not just one, but multiple three day fasts will re calibrate your immune system. It takes multiple ones though, not just like a one-off, but multiple ones, which is why I personally, and I shared earlier, I'm taking the Equip immunity pills. I, I'm very excited after doing a lot of research. I love Equip because of their clean ingredients, um, but I'm going to be doing more three-day fasts, multiple ones to help with my immunity too. Um, and that's free. <laughs> and like I said earlier, if you're just joining us, we saved literally in 2019, $1,000 from doing intermittent fasting and fasting with our food budget, it cut our grocery bill in half. So if you're looking to cut finances, fasting, um, but coming out of, of a place of healing and a place of love. Um, let's go back here too. Uh, green tea is great. That's another amazing one. Um, the bone broth at Aldi, it's, it's chicken stock. So you can get chicken stock kind of anywhere. I have noticed um, Trader Joe's has bone broth and that is also chicken stock as well. <laughs> it exploded in my refrigerator. I was so mad. If you saw that Trader Joe's haul that I did, it ended up exploding in my refrigerator. I got some lemon water in the refrigerator. It's a good source of vitamin C. Um, collagen protein, um, vitamin Farms from Costco just started taking it today. I got collagen from Costco, but I'm waiting for a delivery. I have had the Costco collagen myself. Um, I am now using Perfect Keto's collagen. Um, I will have a discount code below. It's chocolate. So this for me does break a fast, but I do like taking the, someone asked about supplements. I do like having collagen for my hair and for my nails, particularly now that I don't have my fake nails anymore. I feel so naked without my, my fake nails on here anymore. Um, it took three weeks. Collagen is a must. Stacy says, yes, Dr. Mindy is recommending not to do fast over 48 hours right now to keep your immune system strong. So I have only been doing for, yes, yes. yes thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Holly, for saying that. Oh, you rock, Holly. Thank you for saying that. So let me, let me read back because I, I want to take my words back for saying that. Thank you. Dr. Jason Fung also said the same thing as Dr. Mindy. I'm not who she, sure who Dr. Mindy is, but Dr. Fung has said the same thing. 24 to 36 hours right now is best. Past 36 hours, it can, yes, 
if you're looking to rebuild your immunity. So, but what I just said about autoimmune disorders, three day fast, I would not do that right now. For me, I'm doing that. And I have separate methodology for that. But for other people, I should have been clear on that. Thank you, Holly, for writing that so I can retract my words. My encouragement for people, if they're looking to help their immune systems, do 24 hours to 36 hours. After 36 hours, that's also going to change insulin. Um, and if your goal is weight loss, that may not be super helpful too. My goal is weight loss, of course, but the longer getting to the point that I want to get at with 36 hours, which is how much that 72 hour fast. Um, that's my goal. Like I feel in the zone, I'm more productive. I literally have make more money. No joke. I've tracked it when I do fasting. Um, because my mental clarity is I'm so much more productive and have better mental clarity with things. Um, farm foods market bone broth is a good source. Esther says, um, hi, Jillian. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. Hello. You're currently doing a two of my three day fast. You go Jillian. Yay. I am on our, how many hours has it been? I started at nine 30 last night, which is a horrible time by the way, to start the fast. Oh my goodness. Don't start your fast at nine 30. I ideally, the best time to end fast for me is usually I like to do it at like 10 AM if I can, <laughs> or at like two or three, depending. Those are kind of like my sweet cadence spots that I usually find that I can run through fairly easily for me ending say I would be ending my fast at seven o'clock at night eight o'clock nine o'clock at night a I'm going to be going to bed and I don't want to go to bed with that full belly of food um and b waiting that long through the day for me I, I don't like it I'd rather eat a little bit like 10 a.m or two to three after kind of like the lunch rush um Thank you. I love watching your information. Oh, I, I appreciate you right back. Seriously, when I say I'm so grateful for people to be on this journey with me, like I mean it. Like, seriously, you guys keep me accountable. Um, my husband knows that you guys are like my support system. I'm like, the people that I get to do YouTube with are literally like friends, even though I've never met them. It keeps me accountable. It keeps me going. I don't think I would have been on this weight loss journey had I had not had connections with people doing this. Um, kettle and fire bone broth. Um, is good if I'm not making it from home. Yes, Cynthia was talking about making it from home. You can make it in the Instapot. Um, you can make it in your crock pot or on the stove. Um, making it ideally on the stove or the slow cooker ideally is best because Instapot can have less of the nutrients, but I do real life. Royal weight loss meeting real life here. If you need to use the Instapot, rock on. I feel like it's a good tool. Um, Fire and Kettles bone broth. I love their soups made out of bone broth. We heavily this winter had a bunch of the Fire and Kettle soups that were really, really good. I love Fawn because I also, it's woman owned and I love supporting women owned business. No problem. I met Dr. Mindy P-E-L-Z. Thanks, Holly. I'm going to have to check out Dr. Mindy. Um, when fasting, I think it's important to keep busy and keep occupied. Is that something you do? Hex yeah. So I am super intentional about... Um, and I talk about this in my intermittent fasting for beginner e-course heavily of that's when I'm productive. That's when I'm, um, I intentionally stack my schedule really, really busy. We own multiple companies I intentionally and very busy during longer fasts, A, because of the mental clarity, but B, it prevents me from just thinking about food. Um, and C, I like feeling productive. For me, that makes me feel really good um, being productive with it. So yes, I love keeping busy. I love, I will make my schedule more, but then here's the kicker to that. The yin to the yang is after the fast, I will be intentional also to make my schedule a lot less. And that if I'm doing a rigorous fast, um, I will make sure that there's rest time. When I'm doing these fasts, I also make sure in my schedule, I have adequate sleep. For me, that's imperative and not just sleep, but resting. So later on today, around three or four, I will go rest. I won't take a nap probably, but I'll shut my eyes and just be quiet for 30 minutes around three, four o'clock. Um, I need it. When I'm doing fasting, like I said, I have a lot of energy, but my body, I also have become so in tune with my body through healing it with fasting that I know I need to get extra sleep, that I'm going to need extra rest and extra sleep. And rest for me is not necessarily sleeping. I'm just shutting down my mind and my body. And because I have been thinking so much, usually with a busier schedule for me, that's super important. What do you think about car blockers? Save your money. <laughs> I just don't, Stacey. I don't believe in car blockers. I don't, our bodies are not, our bodies are meant to eat real food. And this is from someone, so let me give my background, is coming from an eating disorder problem of having massive food issues. Clearly, I didn't get to be over 100 pounds overweight without having food issues. And so I walked into weight loss journey, walked into keto.
keto and fasting with the mindset of basically, I, this is Royal Weight Loss Meeting Real Life with real foods. The things I have added in are like perfect keto and supplements and things like that to assist me, but I always come back to having real food. So for me, a carb blocker, if that's what people need to do to get over the hump, then okay. But to me, it seems pointless when I can do a 24 hour fast, check my blood. Um, and I love keto coach. Now I'll make sure that is in the description link below too, for blood checking with insulin and ketone levels through blood. Um, I can do that better than a pill. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I do use pills like the apple cider vinegar or with immunity, but for carb blocker, I just don't see how that's scientifically possible when I can do it through fasting, I can get better results and save my money. So I'd like to invest my money in my 401k. And put it somewhere else for our foster mentees that we work with or with our foster kids we work with. Please post the code for the discount on the collagen. I've desperately been seeking a code. Jennifer, you got it. I will post one after this live stream is over. It and it takes like an hour for like YouTube to recalibrate after the live stream is over. Jennifer, I'll make sure that you get that discount code. I think though that there's going to be a bigger sale going next week. If you're able to hold off, I have a 15% code now. If you're able to wait, I will have one. I think it's next week. I will well, hold on. I can look if you guys want to you guys want to wait a minute. I can look at my email. I think that there's going to be a bigger sale coming up for me. I will have a link um, for y'all. One second. And you guys don't go. Don't go. I know some of you guys are gonna go. Don't go. Stay with me. Stay with me. Um, I can tell you exactly when the sale is. Yep, it's going to be on the, no, yes, yes, no, it's not for collagen, it's not for collagen, so the sale, get the 15% off, I will link that at the end of this, um, and then I have one, a sale starting later in mid-May for actual bars, nut butters, and things like that, okay, um, I agree with Tristan. I like keeping busy. Also, I met clients while at home on my laptop and find the, that the time goes by quickly. Yes. Is apple cider vinegar pills better than the liquid or do you get heartburn from it too? The liquid gives me heartburn for some reason. Okay. So Monica, I have a smell issue. <laughs> Like I have a massive smell problem. To me, apple cider vinegar smells like stinky feet. So when I put it as my salad dressing, I'll use olive oil or avocado oil and then apple cider vinegar as my salad dressing with usually a fresh squeezed lemon or lime and then some pink salt mixed in the dressing. It stinks to me. So I have to put other accoutrement or something else to like hide the smell, like maybe a little garlic salt or something in there. I have to hide the stink. So that's why that's the, honest to goodness is why I do like taking the apple cider vinegar pills because they don't stink. It's the smell factor. And then like the gag reflex of taking the apple cider vinegar is why I don't take the actual. And I know so many of our viewers are like, why are you wasting money on a pill? I just don't want it. It stinks to me. And also the taste, it smells like dirty feet. Like I just, I just can't. There's certain things I can do that I cannot do. So that, that's the reason why it's, it's a spell factor. <laughs> totally honest. Um, is there anything I can do for fasting for rapid weight loss? Yes, Stacey. Okay. So again, I'm not a medical doctor. Do not take this as medical advice. I'm not trying to play a doctor or give medical advice on the internet. What has simply worked for me, you can take this as educational experience, strength, and hope for my, what's worked well for me is kicking in 24 hour fast. You lose one pound of weight, fat, fat from it. 24 hours, fat. Start getting in OMAD. OMAD will work for three or four months per Dr. Jason Fung has said that that eventually stops working as quickly for fast weight loss. So if you want fast weight loss, OMAD is amazing. Um, and I'm forgetting the amazing, beautiful woman. There was a gal who's lost a hundred pounds through Ahmad and I'm forgetting her name. She's fabulous. Um, and I'm I can see her face in my head right now. And if you're watching, I'm so sorry. I've totally forgotten her name, but I can see her face in my head through doing Ahmad. So there's lots of different ways you can do fasting. The biggest game for rapid weight loss with fasting, 24 hour fast, eat a meal, 24 hour fast, eat a meal. If you could then go to like 48 hour fast, eat for the day, then go 48 hour fast. You'll find the cadence and rhythm that works really well for you. For me, the best cadence and rhythm is on Sunday. I'll start with a 48 hour fast. I'll go Sunday to Monday, Monday to Tuesday, eat, hang out, be good, eat the next day on Wednesday. Then Wednesday night, if I am able, kick it into another 48 hour fast and then start that cycle all over. That worked very well. My skin, and I've talked about it in other videos, literally right here, because I haven't been fasting long term, you can see there's you, there's wrinkles right there. There's like skin stuff. When I do fasting more than 30 hours, that will go away. And I'll show you guys. I'm going to be doing a, a my 50 hour fast video to show you like a day in the life. You'll see that that will disappear. So now I have the actual. Oh, 
was right in there. Um, my camera hopefully is picking it up. That will go away. Skin tags will fall off. Um, wrinkles, I, I do less Botox with fasting because like right in here on my glabella, um, I haven't been fasting. And so these wrinkles have come back. They will go away. My, I age less. And I'm like, if that's doing that to my skin, what is it doing to my organs, my cells internally? If I can see it externally, I use a lot less beauty products when I'm on a really good fasting regimen. Um, and like I said, just literally a cut our grocery bill in half. It saved us a ton of money with it. So for fast weight loss, start if you're able to do OMAD one meal a day, 23, 24 hour fast, eat a meal. If you're not able to do that, then stair step your way on countessoflowcarb.com, my blog. I have a free stair stepper for you. Print that sucker out and, and do that. And the Countess Code, my huge intermittent fasting course that I have, or in my smaller e course, the Intermittent Fasting for Beginner e course, I do have also visual printables for people to help them stair step. There's an app called, um, is it Zero? There's an app that will help you track your fasting. Um, to help you, if you're a tracker, I like to write it out and visually see it on my mirror. Yeah, it's called Zero. There's a Zero app that you can use and will track your fasting on your phone if you want to do that too for your times. Um, do I exercise at all when I'm fasting? Um, so in my ideal utopia, I would love to lift weights while I'm fasting, but I don't usually. I will walk. I will walk. I have, I, I take that back. I did once and I was at a 50 some hour and I lifted. It was incredible. It was amazing. I don't know why I'm afraid. It is a mindset. I've done it before. So I know I can do it. I've broken that belief barrier, but I get afraid for some reason. And this is me just being completely authentic. It's a mental thing. And now that I'm saying it, I'm like processing it out loud. Like it's a mental thing. There's no reason why I can't work out during fasting. In fact, Olympic athletes do because you have more, I'm going to mess it up, HCG, H, the human growth hormone. You have better results from doing workouts while you're in a 24-hour fast. Usually from working out, I just don't. So now that I'm saying that out loud, thank you for asking that question. and It will hold me more accountable. I definitely do walk them. That for me is like a, a standard thing. Walking every day for 45 minutes, sprints, high intensity, weightlifting will help boost metabolism. Walking again in the afternoon, Chase said, hi, Chase. Hi, hi, hi. Um, I can't fast. So looking for other ways to do rapid weight loss. Great. Stacey, do you track your macros with keto? Are you able to do the ketogenic diet? I would track your macros, your fat grams, your protein grams, and 20 carbs or less. I have a free macros calculator on my blog, countessoflowcarb.com too. Omad, um, Stacey, the Omad, and one hour workout a day, regardless of is just keep moving and you'll see massive results. Good luck. That's really good advice, Jillian. Um, I down apple cider vinegar from a shot glass. It's a good way to use a shot glass since I quit drinking in 2009. Yes, take a pill of AC Bill if it's a problem for you or ACV, apple cider vinegar. Um, Stacy uses Carb Manager. Great. Carb Manager Premium, I do the paid one because it has net carbs in it too. Um, hey, Link, Linky, I'm so glad that you are here. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I love doing one hour live streams. It's kind of been my thing. The past few weeks we've been doing this. I love seeing Martha here. I love seeing Jillian. I love seeing some of our repeaters, Esther here. Um, Chase is also uh, uh, seeing it too. So very much seeing, enjoy seeing you guys for our, our live stream. So I'm going to go back to some of our questions. What do you do to break a fast? So Dr. Fung in his book, the complete guide to fasting also, um, talked a lot about, hold on one second. There we go. Um, hold on one second. There we go. Um, sorry, I was hiding. Some people have come on said some gross things. So I'm, I've been hiding those gross comments. Um, going back to what I was saying, I was talking about, uh, oh, breaking in fast. Okay. So Dr. Fong said in his book, The Complete Guide to Fasting, you can have nuts after a fast, have nuts, um, a fourth a cup of nuts, 30 minutes before you eat a meal. He's actually retracted that statement and said it's better to have a half a cup to a full cup of raw vegetables or a small salad before breaking a fast. If you have tummy issues during fasting, someone emailed me, they took one of my e courses and it's like, I had blowout diarrhea. I want my money back. And I felt so badly, of course. Um, because they were doing it, they were having way too much coffee. When I started to probe and ask questions, I'm like, 
stop the coffee, stop having caffeine. That's probably giving you the runs. Um, stop having caffeinated beverages is one. And two, how you break your fast is also important. I love having an avocado. I love having a Caesar salad, some raw vegetables, some chopped up peppers or chopped up cucumbers. Allowing, I am one to have tummy issues also. Allowing myself to have that 30 minutes to an hour before a bigger meal is very helpful of easing your digestion back into like, oh, re refiring back up. Like, oh yeah, my tummy needs to start digesting things again after not having anything in it for 24 hours, 48 hours, or however long you fast for. I've stopped losing on ketos. Any tips for a great start? Hi, Ray. Yes, start doing a 24-hour fast if you're able. Start with a 16-8, doing 16-hour fasting, eight-hour eating window. Just start some sort of fasting, right? And for me, like I said, this whole thing is mental. If, you, if you've been cleared by your doctor, I've been cleared by my doctor. So this is a mental mindset game for me. And then it's just like, okay, well, how long do I want to go for? Do I want to do 24 hours? Do I want to do 48 hours? It's literally not the physical pain in my tummy. When I feel that, I put some salt underneath my tongue. It changes my taste buds. Uh, it gives me the minerals that my body's probably craving as well. I'll drink some water and I'll let it pass. If I have set the intention, like I'm doing, I'm doing a 50 hour fast. If I've set that intention, I check in with my body. Have I cut fast early? Heck yeah, because I checked in with my body and I was like, just because I want to do a 50 hour fast, my body's telling me to stop. If your body's telling you to stop, meaning you're dizzy, you're lightheaded, you feel faint, freaking stop. Like, don't, like, don't, don't pass go, don't collect the $200. Stop fasting if you feel those things. But if it's hunger, that's different. That's for me when I push past it of like, no, that's a mental hunger. That's the ghrelin. That's the hunger hormone kicking in. And you say, ghrelin, be quiet. You be quiet, ghrelin, in there. Um, and I push past it and it passed. This too shall pass. Having those hunger hormones will pass as well. Welcome to the newcomers. Jillian said that's very nice of you. So Ray, um, I would encourage you stop losing weight on keto. Jumpstart in. Jumpstart in with a 24-hour fast. Omad is a great kickstart. Um, for some people, though, there's a yang to the yang. Again, I have eating disorder healing that I've been uh, actively had have been and still continue to work on that if I do too much omotting one meal a day, I have to switch it up or else for me, just find myself be true for myself. It can lead to issues for me. So I do like to switch it up of omad, getting that cadence and rhythm, like it, and then switch it up to doing like a 50 hour fast. Um, go back to doing 16 hour fast where I do lose the most weight, have less anxiety, less depression is through doing, um, you know, 24, 48 hour fast, 72 hour fast. My anxiety and depression are massively less uh, through fasting too. That's just been my experience. Um, I My go-to is a few deviled eggs after a longer fast then wait an hour. And then that's worked for me so far. Holly, that's a great, Holly, you, thank you. That is, I'm going to have some deviled eggs to break my fast. That actually sounds delicious. And I just got a shipment order in of some more um, uh, mustard. So that will be perfect to make those. Are beef and butter fast just one of the many tools good to use to restart weight loss? I can't remember if I've ever seen you do one on YouTube. Esther, that's a great question. Great questions coming in the comments. Keep the comment questions coming. These are great questions. You will have not and probably won't see me do a beef fast, a butter fast, an egg fast because of eating disorder issues. Back when I was 11 or 12, I did a salmon only diet. I don't eat salmon anymore, really. I actually just got an order of fish and it has a lot of salmon. So I'm going to start re like, re it's been like, what, 30 years, 20 years since that. Um, so I don't like doing those only ones. I, for me, it's better just to fast. Like why I understand doing beef only fast because there's no carbs in that. And same thing with butter fast. But then for me, I'm like, what's the point? Might as well just fast. Like just look at it as a fast fast. So those are great tools. And again, I know stuff be true. I'm not knocking anyone who does that. I feel like if that works for you, do it, do what works well for you. For me, I would just never eat beef again or never eat butter or never eat eggs. Like the egg fast that grossed me out. People tell me, and I'm like, <laughs> just for me, that's just me. But you know yourself well enough to know what would work well. If that motivates you, then rock on with your bad self. And I encourage that. Um, what about nausea when fasting? So Jennifer, good question. I don't really get nauseous. It's usually tummy issues, not of nausea. <laughs> if it's nausea, I, I don't know. Um, when I was pregnant, I could not fast. I couldn't, I got so barfy. I just, Oh, it was awful. The morning sickness. And then I was in my second trimester. I still was barfy. So I couldn't do that for me was why I had nausea. I was, I was, I was preggers. Um, so 
I don't, I don't, I don't know. I wish I knew Jennifer. I'm going to look on that. And for the next one, let me write that down for the next one. I will make sure I know, but right now I don't want to give the incorrect answer. I know for diarrhea, how to help that, but for nausea, I don't. Um, but I will look. Dr. Berg said you should stop if you're feeling nauseous. Yeah, I would agree with that too. Chase just said that, Jennifer. It, nausea for me that goes in, like if you're feeling dizzy, if you're feeling faint, nausea, like why push it? You know what I mean? Like something else is going on there that your body is telling you and giving you a signal. Hunger is one thing. Nausea is a different thing. So I would agree with what Chase just wrote. Definitely, I would stop. I would stop. And um, that would, to me, is a red flag. What's Omad? One meal a day. So basically a 23, 24 hour fast, eat a meal. People will ask, what's the calorie range of that meal? When do you feel full? <laughs> I think some people overthink a lot. I look at comments and I love questions, but I'm like, why are you tripping out? Someone was like, it was 23 hours and 32 minutes and I had to eat. I'm like, why is that blowing your gizzard? Great. That's amazing. And I tell my fasting coaching clients this, you were in the top 2%. Dr. Barry, Kendi Barry, um, when we were doing our fasting challenge, messaged me one day and I will never forget this and I want to pass it along to you. If you're doing fasting, you're like in the top 3% of the nation. Most people don't do fasting. Even if you're doing a 16-8, that's huge, 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 huge. Um, and give yourself a big pat on the back for it. Salmon is good for health. Omega fatty free acid. Hi, babe. So my four-year-old's coming in. Please don't walk over here. And what are you going to say? We'll see. Hopefully it's something that's appropriate. What do you do? What do you have, babe? Um, it's, it's not a YouTube, but beetles eat leaves and they make an early from our plants. They do. Beetles eat leaves from our plants. Yes. Yeah, so we've been doing gardening. So we're having a whole garden we're building. So we need to protect them from the beetles. Did you learn that on your bug show today? No. It's just when I saw the there's little holes and the dad that beetles eating. Oh. Guess what? Mommy's finishing her live stream in 10 minutes. How many minutes? 10. 10. Can you say bye, friends? Bye, friends. Okay, show me to work. Show me my office, please. I'll be down in 10 minutes. Love it. That's my four-year-old. So there we go. Um, let's go back to the questions here. Keto for two years. I don't know how I'm going to get back on the train. Carolyn, I would say then don't. I would look into that fasting. Um, if you stop for some reason or if there's a mental barrier, dive into a 16 -8. You know what I mean? Like my husband doesn't do keto with fasting, but for him, he could wrap his brain around fasting way better than he could with keto. So if you're having resistance with keto, what's going on there? You know what I mean? Try a different, all roads lead to Rome, try a different road. And for me, fasting is where I have the best results with keto. Um, but it's taken a while for that. Um, I can't fast for nausea and dizziness. I love the questions also. This is my first time catching you live. Yay! Please hit the thumbs up button, y'all. Thank you, Esther. Yes, please make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Click subscribe and share this with your friends. I would greatly appreciate it if you shared it with friends. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Sonia. Yes, that's my sweet little boy. Probably the nausea is low electrolytes. I'm on my first 72-hour fast, and I had to stop because I got so sick. When I take electrolyte, it does not bother me at all. hope that helps. Yes, I will put down below my electrolyte electrolyte supplement too. Thank you so much. Holly, Holly girl, you're reading my mind, sister. <laughs> like That's the third time you've caught me. I do have, and someone asked about my supplements. I do take electrolytes too with longer fast before I before I start. I will link that. Again, it will take me about an hour for YouTube to recalibrate this since it's such a large video file. I will put my electrolyte that I take before my fast. Don't have it during your fast. Um, but before I have my fast, I have a great electrolyte too. And that's a wonderful suggestion as well. I have two great grandsons living with you right now. Oh my goodness, Carolyn, you rock. I like using the recommendation of Malden salt every, um, use it every day. Malden salt, um, is the flakier kind. Do I have my tin? I like their tins because they travel. Um, I do love Redmond sea salt. It's my new, and there it's over there on my counter. I didn't bring it over to show you. They have small shakers and they're Utah based. Malden's is UK based. So they're from the United Kingdom, um, over in England and I like supporting Redmond's because it's here in the United States with Utah. Um, but I love the salt having the flakes. I do love Molden's because they're actual flakes. I cannot replicate that. Molden is the only one that has the flakes. So I do love having that. Um, when I fast, drinking Himalayan salt helps. Yes. Yeah, so I've done a Sole water video, S O L E. It's pronounced Sole. It looks like Sol, but it's Sole. Um, and it's basically pink Himalayan salt, or you could use your Malden salt or uh, Redmond's sea salt or a high grade of salt. It's salt water. <laughs> 
So go check out my Soleil videos and, and, and how you utilize those. You can use the salt water. We do need a half a teaspoon to a full teaspoon per day of salt for our body's functions to work better. Beef and butter, I don't call it a fast. It's part of my carnivore diet. Dr. Kendi Berry got me doing that challenge over a year ago. I love that. And I love that that works well for people, right? Um, yeah, I love that. Do you think about Gatorade Zero or Powerade Zero? So you see great question. So I, at the beginning, used to have those, but I found higher quality sources to get the electrolytes, which is why now I take the salt and the electrolyte pill that I take. Um, I, I did use in the beginning Gatorade Zero and Powerade Zero. I just didn't like there's other added ingredients and crap in there. Um, Dr. Kendi Beery does have a Keter Aid video too of where if you don't want to take an electrolyte pill or supplement, you can make it that way to also get electrolytes as well. I'm doing alternate day fasting. Sylvia, that's a great suggestion for someone who's just starting alternate day fasting. I'm eating far too much for the amount of exercise in, at the at the minimum. So alternate day is one day of fasting, one day of off. For mindset, that's a great way for people if they're starting or trying to work it in or just having a routine is super, super helpful for people. Um, yes, I could imagine having extra children in your house and gaining weight. I could imagine being in this quarantine with having no help with my amazing son is yeah, that's why I'm back to doing these longer fasts. Um, hi, boss, Lady Denise. Thank you. I'm grateful to be on this journey with you. Is there a specific brand of pink Himalayan salt or is it better? Or are all brands the same? No, um, not all brands are the same. The two that I recommend, I don't even really recommend pink Himalayan salt because a doctor emailed me. Um, and then someone else had talked to me about this. There was questionable about pink Himalayan salt is made in Pakistan and there's questionable. And again, I citing my source. I wish I could cite the doctor's name who emailed me to cite. I like citing my sources. So y'all can double check and research on your own. They had said that there was nuclear issues with pink salt and that the only pink salt comes from Pakistan. So therefore that all of that could be lumped into that together. Is that true? I don't know. That was the one doctor emailing me, but somebody else had emailed me that too. Um, and so it got me thinking, I was like, oh, I love molten salt. I, have, I, I, I love their factory or however they cultivate the salt and Redmond's um, here in the United States. I highly, I, those are the two I recommend. Pink salt, I don't recommend anymore. Even for the Soleil water, I need to make a new Soleil water video with using those two salts. Um, because I don't recommend pink Himalayan salt because now I know that it became so popular that there was questions of the minerals with it. And, uh, anyways, it got me thinking. And so, so I, that, that took me down a rabbit hole. Sorry. Um, with that. Okay. So let's go back to the questions of breaking the fast. Um, uh, avocados having for me, I do have keto. So then I will have a ketogenic meal. My husband is not keto. He will, he will not have a keto meal, but I will have a high fat, moderate protein, low carb. When I start my fast for me, and I've tested, maybe some of you other folks out there can, uh, can, 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 can back me up. Chase, if you're, if you're watching and also, uh, Tristan too, of, of folks who, and, um, Holly as well, people who've done longer fast for me, the best source of protein is beef. I've tried with seafood. I've tried fish, crab, scallops, shrimp, chicken, pork. The only thing that I really, really, and I don't know if this is just mindset or if this is fact, um, but beef, I feel a physical difference when I have beef. And when I have my seafood, of course, for the keto diet, I'll have a beautiful piece of fish and then I'll put butter on top and seasoning and stuff. So it's high fat, moderate protein, low carb, but it doesn't keep me as satiated and as full. So that's been my experience is beef really, really does wonders. Um, I have to go to meet clients. Do you have specific days you do live chats? Esther, great question. I don't. It's either Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, depending on filming. I was supposed to this week do on today, or actually yesterday, release my meal prep cleanup video, and I just haven't edited it. So with the quarantine, my schedule is all sorts of jacked. Um, so I don't, I wish I had a set schedule. My four-year-old dictates my schedule. So <laughs> once the end of quarantine, I, I would love to get into a set rhythm with it. So we have gone for an hour today. This has been amazing. I would love to see your questions in the comments. Make sure that you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm going to put in the description my how to start the intermittent fasting beginner course, e-course that I have. There's a small one and then a big course. It's not, a, it's huge. Um, the ketosis diet that lasts for several months. That's a whole course that leads you through everything with fasting. Those two e-courses, I do of course have a how to start the keto diet for beginners um, with partner and children. Avoid the biggest mistakes with the keto diet. Lots of resources and my supplements with a cook. 
And then also Perfect Keto with their meal replacements will all be in the description link. With that discount code, Jennifer, if you are still watching, Jennifer, I will make sure that I put that discount code for you. Or you can email me at countofsoflowcarb at gmail.com and I can happily just email you the discount code too. Um, when you started and when I started listening, you were speaking about fasting. Is your opinion a person with insulin resistance fast? Oh my, yes. Insulin resistant helps heal the body um, majorly, majorly. In, insulin resistance with fasting. Fasting helps heal this. Dr. Fung, and so your homework <laughs> is to look up Dr. Jason Fung's videos on insulin resistance. If you can sit through the science of it, it's, it's the, I'll get to the punchline. It heals your body with insulin resistance. Massively, massively helps with insulin resistance is with fasting. We, for me, um, I, I bought into the 1990s, um, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, dessert, like that is my, was my insulin chronically spiking every time I ate. And so giving our bodies a rest, our insulin, a low level rest of not spiking for me did wonders to help heal insulin resistance and help, um, massively with it. Stacy, if you want that code to email me, count us low carb at gmail.com or just wait in an hour or so YouTube will have this video calibrated and it'll be all set. So put your comments below. We'll do this next week. I do love doing weekly lives. Um, and I'm glad you're being Monica. I would love to have you come back next week and keep the questions coming. Those are awesome, awesome questions. It was great talking with you all. Let's make it a powerful day, friends. I'll keep you posted on my 50 hour fast. Bye guys.